was beaten by about four yards. Second and 15. And Ray puts it up again. He wants Bowman, and he's got him. Inside the 40-yard line. Carlos Thomas in coverage. A battle of the number fours on the field, and Bowman wins the battle. Tie cats are going to go with pressure up front, and Ricky Ray knows that he's got one man unblocked, that he has to get the football out of there in a hurry, and Bowman is that guy. He's the adjuster. He's got to get to the middle and then uses his body with the ball in the air to win the jump ball. Catch it at his highest point, Carlos Thomas in coverage. 29 yards and an Edmonton first down. More pressure, Ray stands in, what stamps and incomplete. There's the safety, Jason Shivers, who has moved across from his halfback position. Dylan Parker was a safety last year for Hamilton and has been injured the last few weeks with back spasms and issues there. And you can see Jason Shivers there just checking his play sheet. He doesn't wear it on the wrist. He wears it around his belt. Something new for the Ticat defenders. 34, 34. Under Corey Chamblin to have those playlists. Nice play of the drive, second and ten. And Ray steps up again. And lunges inside the 35, but he'll come up short of the first down. Check out the protection for Ricky Ray. Now, he's not going to find an open receiver, but look at Patrick Cabongo in here working side by side with Aaron Fiaconi. They're touching each other off the snap, so they don't lose their spacing between each other. Ricky Ray finally starts to collapse late. Now, that was a coverage issue, but great protection again up front. Patrick Cabongo, Aaron Fiaconi working side by side. So Duvall this time from 41 yards out. Hit from 48 in week one. And he's on the money again. That'll double the Eskimo lead. Early second quarter. Ticats trail 6-0. Let's go back to the sidelines and here again is Sarah. Chris, in week one, Avon Coburn had 15 carries for 75 yards. And heading into this game tonight, the Ticats said they figured that he would have to figure prominently into this game. Offensive coordinator Kahari Jones said that a Rich Stubler defense for Edmonton, he figured that they would try to attack the Esco or the Ticats' greatest strength, which is their passing game. So he felt it was important to get Coburn going. And as long as they did well in the running game, that they would be fine this evening. So far, Coburn has three carries for 16 yards. Ticats had 10 points in the opening quarter last week. They were shut out in the second half. And have yet to register a point here. Marcus Thigpen, and look at Mike Miller. This kid's really developing a niche here in the first two weeks. And they're cheering in New Brunswick again. A former hockey player, too. He gets down there, and he's dropping the gloves on these teams. Great open field tackle. Broke himself down, and then he actually tackled from his knees on that play. Well, one of the objectives was to improve the Canadian talent on this team, and Mike Miller gives him a little more depth in that department. Let's see if the Ticats can get it going offensively. And here is Steve Stalla cut down. On a good defensive play by Joaquin Bradley, the former Hamilton Ticat. Yeah, Rich Stuber, the defensive coordinator, has got some options here. He's got a young group that he can mold to teach that defense. Maybe the key to it is Rod Davis in the middle. He's got to be able to relay the calls, and they can switch from a 30, 30 front front. three down line right. to a 40 front Tight quite right. easily. Second and three. Stopped him in his tracks. Didn't register a stat last week, which is a surprise. Gets one there. Oh, yes, he does. You're going to see Greg Peach in the two-point stance come off the edge from the top. 
Rod Davis, who I mentioned, that middle linebacker, steps up in what's called the B gap in there. So he occupies blocks to the front side. Greg Peach is free and gets some help there from J.C. Sherrick. Peach, the only returning defensive lineman for the Eskimos, starter, Weldon Brown. That is 40, and yeah, that's where he will be dropped by Cathedral Secondary School product, Nathan Kenya. TSN Radio 1050, the evolution of sports radio is here. Mike Richards in the morning. Sobolski and company for the afternoon drive. Listen live on TSN Radio 1050 in Toronto, and you can also listen, listen nationally online, tsn.ca, or on the TSN mobile app or iPad and iPhone. Seven tackles for Jamal Johnson in week one, tied Ray Williams in that linebacker court. Big and Fred Stamp for the catch at midfield. And an Eskimo first down just into Tiger Cat territory. You know, and, and that ball thrown right in behind the linebacking core, Jamal Johnson and Ray Williams, who are right here, and they're spying that play action to Calvin McCarty. So the run now starting to influence the linebackers from the Hamilton Tiger Cats and pull them close to the line of scrimmage, opening up those crossers for Fred Stamps. Two catches, 50 yards for Stamps. Mentioned the 10 catch game last year. 181 yards and a touchdown for Calvin McCarty. And Jamal Johnson cuts him down at the 50. Big hit there and an even bigger one last week. And I think it will be tough to find a bigger hit than this this year. Mm. And somehow Buck Pierce got up from one of the biggest I've seen being in the booth in 17 years in the CFL, and I'm not exaggerating. Yeah, the only other one I could think of was Jackie Mitchell on Dave Dickinson. Uh, yeah, go, right, go. And that one had a lasting effect on Dickinson's career. Jason Barnes has the catch, gets away. And down to the 30-yard line for Jason Barnes, the man who was injured and had his career-threatening injury last year at Ivor Wynn. What a comeback story he is writing early this season. Just five starts last year before his injury situation and then the concern that his career may be over. What a move to cut back inside. Now, Marcel Young wants to get him to go back inside but can't open the gate that much. He's got to slow him down a little bit. We mentioned his big game a week ago versus Saskatchewan. Tackle made by Marquise Knowlton, but it's 24 yards for Barnes. And an Eskimo first down. Look out. Ray got it away. And Fred Stamps dropped the ball. Had a shot at the end zone. Looked like Ray got that away just in time with Justin Hickman bearing down from the backside. Well, yes, he did. And he had Matthew Bertrand out of the backfield here. And he was open early, but Ray wanted more. He wanted to get Fred Stamps down the field. Stamps is open. Now the ball floats a little bit, but Ryan Hines gets caught cheating coming underneath. Fred Stamps just can't hang on. He was distracted just enough by Hines. So second and 10 from the Ticat 30. Three-man rush and pressure, Hickman. And Ray throws it away and just makes it to the line of scrimmage. Well, the Eskimos anticipated a little more heat from that Hamilton front four today. Albert Smith and Justin Hickman yeah. providing it there. Yeah, Justin Hickman's going to get, get a matchup here. He's in a two-point stance. And Calvin McCarty, the running back, is the guy who is now in charge on that backside and he just stands in there he tries to cut block him but you can see he misses him cleanly hickman goes around the edge and causes all kinds of problems seven sacks last year back up, back up. so duvall from 37 out and uh, that one missing and it's a single point He's not sure he missed it. Seven nothing Eskimos. Well, David Duvall thought that one went through. It was a brief argument about it. You can see the initial reaction after the kick out of the hold from Andrew Nowacki. Yeah, I think he was a little 
upset about the contact made here. Ryan Hines comes off the edge and then he gets up quickly thought it was in. And just outside. First miss of the year. Kevin Glenn trying to get it going and stretching it out and it's picked off and Joaquin Bradley will enjoy that. The six year Hamilton Ticat corner gets one against his old team. This ball way too late for Kevin Glenn. He wants to throw to the wide side of the field and throw it deep. He's got to get rid of it a lot sooner. Well underthrown to Maurice Mann. And Joaquin Bradley just stayed on that inside shoulder. He's playing the ball the entire way. He doesn't even look back to Mann on the outside. You're right. He likes that against his old team. 11th career interception for Bradley. Eskimos with the ball again. And Jason Barnes, Bo Smith there, and the Eskimos felt Bo Smith was there a little early. Now I asked Marcel Belfe if, if Kevin Glenn struggles early, would he go to a shorter lease with Kevin Glenn and possibly pull him earlier? He said, absolutely not. He said, it's going to be Kevin Glenn's game. It's, he's a starter. Nothing changes with how I'm going to treat that unless I see it a disaster over a longer period of time Then we may mix it up, but Kevin Glenn staying in Four interceptions now for Glenn in Six quarters Quentin Porter also threw one last week Eskimos look like they were offside again And Ray straddles the line and gets it to Marcus Henry Into Ticat territory But it looks like this one will be coming back would be a 26 yard pickup for the rookie Marcus Henry out of Kansas offside Edmonton number 81 five yard penalty for Pete second down and Jason Barnes off the mark too quickly that's a couple for the receivers now the offsides that one takes away a big gainer about timing up that cadence. It's interesting that they didn't have that issue in week one. It is an offense that is using that that waggle or motion to the line of scrimmage a lot more than they have in the past. Second and 15. Underneath Henry. And he'll be brought down short of the first down. Tackle on the play made by the new corner for the Thai Cats, Marcel Young, and a punting situation for Edmonton. Can I just show you that waggle you're talking about? Jason Barnes showed you a great example of it here. Look how deep he's going to line up, and then he just that's the waggle you're talking about, Chris, hitting to the line of scrimmage. They're going to punt the ball here, but he lines up 10 yards and then hits it on the fly. I don't know how any offense in the CFL wouldn't do that. Look out, bad snap, Duvall back in his 10. And a long drive kick from the bounce across midfield. And now it is fielded by Jamal Johnson. Doesn't usually get his hands to the ball. And he gets swarmed. And a near disaster for the Eskimos is averted. Only an 18 yard punt because Duval was so deep. But minus six on the return. Well, let's find out what happened. Well, that's that's a huge momentum shift for the Edmonton Eskimos because just to get anything positive out of what could have been an absolute disaster, but Damon Duvall rescues that play after the errant snap by Taylor Inglis. At the 37, Kevin Glenn draws Coburn, and that's not going anywhere. A little frustrated, frustration starting to show here. Avon Coburn getting up and shaking his head. Kahari Jones is the offensive coordinator. He's again, another guy who has played the position. Knows Kevin Glenn very well. But he's got to sign, find a way to get a spark, to let a spark out of this offense. Five-man rush for the Eskimos. Second and 10 out in the flat. Stala short of the first down. Bradley there, TJ Hill. And it's another two and out for Kevin Glenn and the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Yeah, and that's what I'm talking about. A, a second and 10 situation, the wide side 
three to five yard out is very very seldomly going to produce a first down for you and then that I'm just wondering now if, if the confidence of this offense is starting to wane and Kevin Glenn throwing underneath on second and ten there trying to avoid a mistake again this ball on a hop picked up by Brandon James and James dancing but finally brought down just over the 21 yard line so just over three and a half minutes to go here in the opening half. If 